Hello, everybody. I hope you all are having a great day today. I just wanted to kind of come on today and sit back and talk to you about orchid collection fatigue. And for those of you who are new to the orchid world, this is a good thing to keep in mind. For those of us who are experienced, this is also a very good thing to keep in mind. Almost everyone I know who grows orchids has experienced this in some form. When we first start collecting orchids and we gain confidence in how to grow them, all of a sudden we think instead of growing a manageable number of orchids, all of a sudden our collection grows huge in a very short period of time. Then watering or fertilizing day comes and we're thinking, oh dear, what was I doing buying all these plants? So the main thing about collecting orchids and growing them is the satisfaction that it gives you. I love coming back here and just looking at my orchids, talking to my orchids, taking care of them. But I also know that when you have too many, it has an opposite effect. You look at them and it makes you tired. I don't suggest anybody try that because it takes all the fun out of growing orchids. And the number one thing about growing them is the satisfaction you get when they bloom. The satisfaction that you get when they grow that new cane and it's stronger than last year's cane. So my collection has literally grown grown in the size of each individual plant. My plants were growing so large that I didn't have room for them all. And so about a year ago, I had to make some really interesting decisions. I thought, how in the world am I going to find a home for the orchids that I don't have room for? Luckily, I talked to a few friends of mine who were wanting to start orchid collecting. And so oddly enough, the plants that I was wanting to move on, those were the ones that they wanted. Isn't that awesome? So now I get to still see the orchids that I gave to them. I get to teach these friends of mine how to grow the orchids, how to take care of them, what I did, how they can have success, and they can use that to build their own orchid collection. So it worked out for everyone involved. But the reason I did that to begin with was because it was too much for me. On watering day, I was feeling tired. By the end of the day, um, when I was repotting, I was just, I was too tired. It was kind of wearing me out a little bit. And the growth of your plants is another thing you have to keep in mind. That little teeny tiny miniature orchid that you bring at, bring home in a one inch pot is going to look like this before long. And here are two examples of miniature Phalaenopsis orchids. I got these both in one inch pots. They were teeny, teeny tiny when I got them. Now these plants are almost as large as my regular size Phalaenopsis orchids. So just because they say these are miniature, look at this. Now the blooms will be smaller in size on a miniature, but I have also found that since I am fertilizing them very well, um, these, when they bloom, it's like a huge cluster of blooms. So they bloom prolifically, but the leaves start growing larger as the plant matures. So you have to remember what was a little tiny little plant, it's gonna to grow to this size. And now let's talk about regular size Phalaenopsis. Sometimes the regular size Phalaenopsis orchids that you see have Gigantia in them, okay? The first one on the left is Magic Art it does have gigantic proportions to it when it blooms. The blooms on that one are huge. The leaves are, oh my goodness, they're at least 12 to 14 inches a piece. The one in the center is um, Zian Chen 
um, foul diamond. Do you see how much room that one takes up? And then the one over in the corner, that is foul brother pirate king. That one is gigantic. The spike, do you see the top of that spike? So these are large Phalaenopsis orchids. So to put any more orchids in this room is going to be impossible. I can't fit any more back here. So as you're buying your orchid collection, be asking yourself these questions. How big, how large is this plant going to get? How many can I fit in my grow space without crowding them? Because crowding also causes problems. Um, they tip over very easily. Um, that's what happened with Magic Art last year. I lost its spike because it actually tipped over. It was too close to another plant and the spike snapped. Did I cry? Yes, I did, but I got over it. But it also taught me a lesson. Don't overcrowd your plants. Also, overcrowding causes a problem if you get any type of a pest problem and they're too close together it just invites that pest onto the next plant too easily and now let's talk about the dendrobiums do you see all these tall canes these are my regular size dendrobiums the largest one actually the two largest ones i'm probably going to need a grow room just for them in a couple of years these things have grown to the point that they're gigantic and I have to be very, very careful when I move them around. And so you have to remember when you get regular size dendrobiums, this is what you're going to have in three or four years. I've had these now for four years. When I got them, they were cute. They were small. They were compact. But these things grow everywhere. I'm going to have to figure out a way eventually to hang them but they're very, very heavy. And I have a cedar ceiling back here in my sunroom, so I can't hang them from the ceiling. So you see how there's so many, um, there's so many things, so many issues that you have to decipher with your orchids. Not only what type of media, what type of fertilizer, how often to, you know, how often to water, but where am I going to put these when they grow to a gigantic size? Because when you're taking good care of them, this is the type of growth you're going to get. This is what you want. But how many do you have room for? How many, how much time do you have to take care of as well? Now here's my miniature dendrobium, April's Hope. I love this little dendrobium. It grows very compactly and it just doesn't require much space. I've had this one for four years as well and it's starting to bloom really, really well for me. Um, but these are more compact. So if you have a smaller grow space, your miniature dendrobiums are definitely your best choice. And here's my beautiful miniature Catalea. I've had this one for almost 20 years. And as you see, it also has a very compact growing form. Um, it doesn't take up all that much space. So your miniature varieties, um, if you're looking at putting lots of orchids in a smaller space, that's the best way. But remember, this one's going to grow quite large as well. This is pretty good size. So just plan your orchid collection accordingly to your time, to the amount of time you have to spend on them and also according to your grow space. And I've really tried to centrally locate all of my plants into my sunroom. Uh, I do have green plants throughout my house. I like just decorating with green plants. I also have an aloe collection up in my um, upstairs growing room that I'll show you all one day. But most of my orchids are now in my sunroom that also helps you when you're watering and fertilizing um, to go ahead and be able to do a larger collection in a smaller amount of time. It's just just have them centrally located. So I've really enjoyed growing all of my orchids in my grow room. It does save me a lot of time. And I again want to thank everyone for your all's kind comments, kind words. Um, 
Thank you all so much. You're such a blessing to me, and I wanted to say the blessing over you all and your families. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. We'll see you all next time.